Did you know that sharks will only attack you if you're wet? It's <laughs> a fact, that is. That's a fact. No, I've got to say thank you for that welcome. What a fantastic welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I know a lot of comics will say this, but it is really fantastic for me to be here in Swansea. It's got a special significance for me playing Swansea because, um, well, because my stepbrother's real dad is from not far from here. So... <laughs> It's like a homecoming. <laughs> Actually, you might be able to help me with the question. Something's always puzzled me. But Tom Jones, you know Tom Jones? You know he sings that song, It's Not Unusual? And he goes, It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. Blah, 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 blah. And then he goes, It's not unusual to find out I'm in love with you. Woo, woo. Woo, woo. Woo, 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 woo. You know that second bit? Is that Welsh? <laughs> Just have a bit of a laugh. <laughs> to read the papers today, the, the government are very worried about childhood obesity. They're very worried about that. I don't know what they're going to do about it, apart from strengthening seesaws. <laughs> I don't really know what they can do. Yeah. The weird thing is, have you noticed, a lot of these obese children, a lot of these obese kids, they wear trainers. That's odd, isn't it? You know? <laughs> and I don't think they're doing it ironically. You know, they're going, hmm, 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 hmm. Ha <laughs> ha What am I like? <laughs> this is true, it's absolutely true. My nephew goes to a school where if you don't like football or athletics or rugby, you can choose your own activities, I assume, to suit your metabolism. And uh, if I was the larger child, you know, which I think is the nicest way of putting it, if I was the larger child, I'd choose falconry. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect, isn't it, just standing in a field uh, with your arm out? Waiting for the falcon. Mm -hmm. To bring you some titbits. Oh, go for that. Now, get nachos. <laughs> You've got to be very careful what you say. You know, on television, you can't not allowed to swear. He said, OK, fair enough, you know, that's fair enough. I said, I said, I might have to change some material, but I said, you know, it's fine, yeah. So here goes, uh, Robbie Williams, right? What a nincompoop. <laughs> He's such a nincompoop, isn't he? In fact, I'd go as far as to say, he's a flipping nincompoop. <laughs> the twat. <laughs> he is, isn't he? Do you know what drives me mad about him? He's always got his shirt off, hasn't he? Like that, when he's on stage. He's always walking around with his shirt off like that. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> What's the matter with you? You're, you know, you're a pop star, not a scaffolder. <laughs> <laughs> he's walking around. If he could, he'd stick his cock in all our faces, wouldn't he? <laughs> And you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. It's not, it's not because I'm prudish. It's not because I think, oh, oh, a gentleman should always wear a shirt when he's serenading the ladies. No. But if you went to a party, right, and there was a bloke wandering around with his shirt off like that, you wouldn't think, oh, I can't wait to meet him. No. You'd think, uh-oh, the world wanker champion has arrived. <laughs> He's just beaten Chris De Burr in the final. <laughs> and sometimes, right, he's got no shirt on and a scarf. <laughs> <laughs> Someone who's got no shirt and a scarf has spent a little too long getting dressed, I think. <laughs> Shirt, tucking it in, tucking it in, I don't like that one. Put that one on, no, I don't like it. Oh, I just won't wear anything. Ooh, a bit chilly, but it's on. <laughs> well, maybe I'm being harsh on him. Maybe it's just because, maybe it's just because, right, he's using the wrong fabric softener. <laughs> yeah. Probably a cat full of Febreze in his wash. Turns out he's a great bloke. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get punchlines like that every day, do you? I don't get a lot of stuff nicked. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, one of the great things about doing this job, travelling around the country, you get to see what people think about stuff. And one of the things I'm quite interested in at the moment is how people feel about the environment. Is that something you care about here in Swansea? Yeah. Yeah, oh, well, that's good. That's very, very positive. That's very happy. 
But so no, I do. I mean, I do. I really care a lot. I'm quite interested as to why some people really, really care, and other people couldn't give a shit, do they? They don't care at all. They just don't care. Some people, quite happily, they'd fly to the shops, wouldn't they? <laughs> if Easy Jet did a, we'll fly you to the shops deal. Brilliant. I'm in. I can bring back more patio heaters. So the cat's nice and warm in the garden. <laughs> While their neighbours could be shivering, drinking puddle water, <laughs> chucking a sausage backwards and forwards, trying to heat it up. Come on, come on. Because <laughs> some people really care, don't they? Every single piece of environmental news terrifies them. Like, the ice caps are melting. <gasps> sea levels are rising. <gasps> The samba button on a Yamaha organ uses ten times more energy than any other rhythm. <gasps> Turn it off! <laughs> and I care, I do care, I care a lot, actually. I care a lot. Well, not as much as I used to, because I went to America. Right? When I came back, I thought, what's the point? Yeah? Why do I bloody bother? <laughs> because the consumption levels over there are so much more extreme. You know, I just feel stupid now, really. You know, I'm at home recycling. Washing out Marmite pots, you know. <laughs> oh, must get all the Marmite out. <laughs> so they don't have to make another one. <laughs> and they're drilling for oil in Alaska. Mopping up with a seal pup. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel stupid. I feel like I've turned up at an earthquake with a dustpan and brush. <laughs> Can I help at all? Will you, know? <laughs> well, you do all that, I'll do this little bit here. <laughs> Feel better now. <laughs> I do, and I do, I make a big effort. I get the train as much as I can. And I'm really shocked about how crap the trains are in this country. They're amazing. They're so, the standard, the quality of the trains is... I would say at least half the trains I get, you still can't flush the toilet when the train's at the station. I think that's incredible. It's 2009. And we're still crapping on the track. <laughs> with all the technology we've got, they can't come up with a toilet that can be used whenever's necessary. At the moment, it's not even a toilet. It's a hole in a train. <laughs> they don't have this problem on planes or coaches, do they? I've never driven up the M1 behind a coach and gone, Oh, no! <laughs> That's disgusting! I'm getting out of this lane. Whoa! <laughs> Surely they can get someone to help them with this problem, you know? Get someone in, you know, like the iPod guys, yeah. Because they took something that was bulky and inconvenient, didn't they? Your record collection. You used to take up an entire wall in your house, didn't they? But they shrunk it all down. <laughs> Little iPod, wow. Or the mini chicken Kiev guys. Oh. <laughs> Where were their minds at? <laughs> that was fractal, man, because nobody wanted to eat chicken Kiev, didn't they? I don't want that sloshing around inside me. A little one. Oh, could be tempted, yeah. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> Much better than my idea. Massive chicken Kievs. <laughs> I went the other way. <laughs> they were huge, you could stand on them. <laughs> Look at these. <laughs> yeah, that was a great episode of The Dragon's Den. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't invest. They didn't invest. Because I love that show, but they hardly ever invest in anything. They just go, it's rubbish, you're mental, go away, you're a loony. You know? So I don't think they should do, I don't think they should do. Because if you look in the shops, right, there's so many weird, stupid products for sale which people are quite happy to buy. They should probably let most of the stuff through. You know? I mean, there's a lot of products out there. I think that wouldn't get through the Dragon's Den. You know, if you went on the Dragon's Den and said, I've, I've got this idea of these little castles, right, and they go in goldfish bowls. <laughs> <laughs> the goldfish has it's, it's got a little castle to swim around. They'd go, what a goldfish got to do with castles? <laughs> You're mental, you are. That's like putting an anchor in a rabbit hutch. What's the matter with that? <laughs> but I bet if you sold them in pet shops, say, what's that? That's oh, an anchor for your rabbit hutch. I don't want to lose it. He loves that anchor. Yeah. <laughs> Pebble dashing. If you went on the dragon's den, said, I've got this idea. You know your lovely brickwork? I'm going to cover it all in, in cement and stones. <laughs> so your house looks shit. <laughs> With the added bonus, you don't get burgled. <laughs> oh, 
Argos. If you're on the Dragon's Den with the idea for Argos, I've got this idea for a shop, right? It's got everything in it, but you're not allowed to see it. <laughs> yeah. You've been a fantastic crowd. Thank you very much. And good night. Thank you.